Hi, my name is Justin. People call me a nerd, but you know what I'm really a nerd about? Exciting stories. And today's story is about David and David Goliath. and Goliath. But with a twist, because I'll be here helping you understand what's going on the whole time. Okay, I think they're about to get started. In the land of Let's Israel, listen in. There was a young boy named David. He was the youngest of eight brothers and lived in the town of Bethlehem. David wasn't just any boy. He had a special job, looking after his father's sheep. He spent his days and nights in the fields, making sure no harm came to them. It wasn't an easy job, especially when danger lurked. Lions and bears often tried to snatch the sheep, but David was brave. So, if David was brave, that means I can be brave too, just like it says in Joshua 1 verse 9. David loved playing his harp. He played so beautifully that even the birds stopped to listen. One day, a wise man named Samuel visited David's house. God had told Samuel that David would be the future king of Israel. So Samuel anointed David, which means he chose David for a very important role. Meanwhile, in a valley not too far away, a huge problem was growing. Goliath was a bully. He was so big that everyone in the kingdom was afraid of him. Have you ever been afraid of a bully? I know I have. But David? No Every day, way! Goliath challenged the Israelites to send a warrior to fight him. But everyone was too afraid. One day, David went to bring food to his brothers who were with the Israelite army. When he saw Goliath, he couldn't believe that everyone was afraid of him. David said, I'll fight Goliath. God has protected me from lions and bears while I guarded my sheep. He will protect me now. The king gave David armor, but it was too heavy. So David decided to use just his sling and some stones. As Goliath moved in to attack, David took a stone, put it in his sling, and swung it with all his might. The stone flew through the air and hit Goliath right in the forehead. Goliath fell to the ground, and David had Yay! won. Yay! David won! He beat Goliath and the Philistines. But did you know before David, there was another big guy? But he wasn't a bully like Goliath. He was actually on our side. Yes, his name was Samson, and it's a great story. So let's listen in. Our story begins during a dark period for the Israelites, who were oppressed by the Philistines for 40 years. In the town of Zorah, there lived a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan. Manoah's wife was barren and had no children. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. Now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son whose head is never to be touched by a razor, because the boy is to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. He will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Excited and amazed, the woman ran to tell her husband about the angel's message. Soon after, Manoah's wife gave birth to a son, and they named him Samson. As Samson grew, the Lord blessed him. As a young man, Samson went down to Timnah, where he saw a Philistine woman. He returned home and told his parents, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His parents were dismayed that he wanted to marry a Philistine, asking, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson insisted, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. On his way to Timnah, Samson encountered a young lion. The forest was dense and the path narrow when suddenly... A roar pierced the air. A young lion, fierce and wild, charged at Samson. And don't the forget David, who had a similar challenge. Upon him, and with a surge of divine strength, Samson tore the lion apart with his bare hands, as one might tear a young goat. The carcass of the lion lay in pieces, a testament to Samson's incredible strength. But he told neither his father nor his mother 
what he had done. Later, when he returned to marry the woman, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate it as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. At the wedding feast in Timna, Samson proposed a riddle to his thirty Philistine companions. Let me tell you a riddle, Samson said to them. If you can give me the answer within the seven days of the feast, I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. If you can't tell me the answer, you must give me thirty linen garments and thirty sets of clothes. Tell us your riddle, they said. Let's hear it. He replied, Out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. For three days, they could not give the answer. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, Coax your husband into explaining the riddle for us, or we will burn you and your father's household to death. Did you invite us here to steal our property? Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing, You hate me. You don't really love me. You've given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him. She in turn explained the riddle to her people. Before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would not have sold my riddle. Then the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. He went down to Ashkelon, struck down thirty of their men, stripped them of everything, and gave their clothes to those who had explained the riddle. Burning with anger, he returned to his father's home, and Samson's wife was given to one of his companions who had attended him at the feast. Later on, during the wheat harvest, Samson took a young goat and went to visit his wife. He said, I'm going to my wife's room, but her father would not let him go in. I was so sure you hated her, he said, that I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more attractive? Take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I have a right to get even with the Philistines. I will really harm them. So he went out and caught three hundred foxes and tied them tail to tail in pairs. He then fastened a torch to every pair of tails, lit the torches, and let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines. Fields were ablaze, the smell of burning crops filled the air, and the cries of the Philistines echoed as their livelihood went up in flames. He burned up the shocks and standing grain together with the vineyards and olive groves. When the Philistines asked, Who did this? They were told, Samson, the Timnite son-in-law, because his wife was given to his companion. So the Philistines went up and burned her and her father's house down. Samson said to them, Since you've acted like this, I swear that I won't stop until I get my revenge on you. He attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. Then he went down and stayed in a cave in the rock of Etam. One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a beautiful woman. He went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night, saying, at dawn, we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate, together with the two posts, and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. The sheer power required to uproot and carry city gates 
was a display of Samson's incredible strength and defiance. Some time later, he fell in love with a woman in the Valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with the pin. Again she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my hair, he said, because I have been a Nazirite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she sent word to the rulers of the Philistines, Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his hair and so began to subdue him, and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you! He awoke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the rulers of the Philistines assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their god, and to celebrate, saying, Our god has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. When the people saw him, they praised their god, saying, Our god has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us! And he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about 3,000 men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more, and let me with one blow get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. Then Samson reached toward the two central pillars on which the temple stood, Bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines! 
Then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the rulers and all the people in it. The ground shook, the walls crumbled, and the cries of the Philistines filled the air as the temple collapsed. Thus he killed many more when he died than while he lived. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zorah and Ishtol in the tomb of Manoah his father. He had led Israel twenty years. The life of Samson is a powerful reminder of how God can use even flawed individuals to accomplish his purposes. Samson's extraordinary strength was matched only by his human weaknesses. Yet, in the end, he fulfilled his divine mission. What a great story. Okay, hope you had fun. See you next time on Sabbath School Daily. Bye-bye.